now I get an answer. Okay. All right. So we are recording. And, and again, if you have any problem with it, um, it does, if it's not working for you, you let me know. I don't think I have to worry about anybody not wanting to appear on camera because I'm the only one. All right. What do we have here? Um, annotate. The null hypothesis. If anybody wants to speak up, now is the, you, you can do that. No one will know who you are on the recording, but I'm, as usual, I'm not pressing the point anyway. So uh, let's call group one married men and group two single men. We can say mu one is equal to mu two. That's the null hypothesis. Mu one is not equal to mu two. That's the alternate hypothesis. That's really all you need. You don't need anything finer than that. Uh, we're working with a Z. Uh, what's alpha? Alpha is 0.10. So, and it's all we're always going to be doing for this test. It'll always be a two-tailed test um, with 0.05 here, 0.05 here. And you can you look up the critical values in the Z table. Somebody tell me in the chat what you get. And then we're going to get the calculated value of Z. If someone's asking me to repeat, I'm not sure what. Uh, can anyone tell me what the um, critical value is for this test? Neg plus and minus 1.645. Yes, absolutely. That's correct. So it's 1.645 on this side and negative 1.645 on that side. And in order to know what Z to use, I need to find the right formula, right? So let's go to the formula sheet. Um, we want something that has two X bars in it, right? So uh, here we are, Z is equal to X bar one minus X bar two. Well, actually we're gonna be using S, S1 and S2 as point estimators for Sigma one and Sigma two. So we've got the formula right there. And what did you get? What's the numerator? 8.7 minus 7.9? Well, let's go back to the problem. Here we are. OK. All right, so Z is equal to the difference between the two X bars divided by the square root of let me take a look at the formula again. That's and this is why you really should have the formula sheet uh, printed out so that you don't have to keep on going back and forth. S1 squared over N1. Plus S2 squared over N2. And that's under a square root. Now, if you've done it all, if you've done the computation, can somebody tell me what uh, you got for the calculated value of Z? You got, so I see someone got four point, oh, two people got 4.13, good. I'll take it. Okay. So the calculated value of Z ends up being 4.13. It's definitely past 
uh, 1.645, it's in the region of rejection. And so the conclusion is reject HO. All right. Let's clear um, and go to another one. I want to, one thing you, you can see if you didn't see it already that uh, these two sample tests are really, really easy. You just need to do a lot of them. And once you've gotten one, they're all basically the same or very, very similar. Let's take a look at this one under the two sample T. Okay, here, this one's looking at the differences between men and women. And um, we have an average wage for men of $18.95, I guess that's an hour. And for women, uh, $15.09. And the question is, is the reason they're different just because any two samples will be different? Or are the population means really different? I mean, you, anytime somebody wants to take a company to court, they have to do a test like this. Um, but the, but this is going to be a T. Why is it a T? We don't, well, first of all, we don't know sigma, right? And the sample size is very small. So when there are two samples, um, you want to make sure you are at most at uh, 32 in, a, in, in order to uh, be able to use the T distribution. Otherwise, there's really nothing you can do in this class. Thank you. Yes, it's absolutely correct. The people who answered in the chat. Yes, we are yet definitely, um, we know that we're using T and we know why we're using T. Okay, now what's the alter, null and alternate hypothesis? Um, it's going to look very familiar. Mu1 is equal to mu2. Ha! Huh? It's exactly the same, right? Okay, this is, this is um, the reason this is the same is because uh, we have scaled down the complexity a lot. We're not doing um, one tail tests. We're looking at uh, the differences between two means. Um, you don't have to give a particular value. Uh, if you were going to give a value, you'd say, well, I'm hypothesizing that mu1 minus mu2 is zero, which is the same thing as saying mu1 is equal to mu2. So this looks exactly the same as what happened before, but we're using a T distribution now, not a Z, and it's a T with how many degrees of freedom? Twenty-nine. Thank you. Oh, I love hearing a voice. Okay, T with 29 degrees of freedom. Um, it's um, N1 minus one, N2 minus one, and it's a two-tail test. Uh, what's alpha? 0 0.05. So the tail probability is 0 0.025. which means that you're looking up in a t-table where the row is 29 and the column is the 0.025 column. And what did you get for your critical values? I see 2.0452, yes. And of course, on the other side, it's minus 2.0452. Okay, let's go back where I was. So, and as you know by now, looking things up in the T table is much easier than in the Z table because it's set up exactly the way we want to use it for inference. Okay. And I need the formula to get the calculated value of T uh, from the 
formula sheet. And is it going to look very much like the formula for Z? Almost, but it's going to be a lot harder, right? Because what do you have in the formula for uh, T that you didn't have before for Z? You've got S pooled, exactly. Um, and that's the reason that when you do your homework, you'll see that I asked you to use Excel for two sample uh, t-tests uh, because very few people will actually uh, do it by hand. Although I do also want you to be able at least once to show me that you know how to do it by hand. Um, okay, so uh, question? On the test, we'll be expected to solve the T ones by hand, right? Like we'll be using You'll Excel. be able, you, you're expected to know how to solve these by hand, but you're also expected to know how to read Excel printouts. I won't ask you to do Excel on the test. All right. But I may give you a printout and, you know, if sure, you might be able to figure it out, but if you've done it, you'll be much more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. What did you get for the calculated value of T? I'm not going to compute the whole thing now because I kind of want to save time, but it really shouldn't be that difficult. It's just a lot of what we're doing today, uh, including correlation and regression, is just plugging numbers into formulas. What did you get for uh, the calculated value of T from the two X bars? 2.63, I see, good. And that's the final result. So that has the two X bars in the numerator, that has the pooled variance in the denominator. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a hairy formula um, and nobody likes to do it. Um, okay, so that's actually, part three. And then for part four, we have to have a conclusion. The critical value was 2.0452. 2.63 is in the region of rejection. And so the conclusion is reject the null hypothesis. The, the two uh, groups produce different statistics because they really are two different populations. It's not reasonable to believe that these are just two random samples from the same population. And that's basically in any two group test, that's always what you're looking at. Okay, let's take a look at another one. I wanna do one example of each and then we'll take questions. Um, um, um. Okay. Here we are. The two sample Z for proportion. It's gonna look exactly the same. Okay. A researcher wants to compare foreclosure rates. Okay, so Right away, we're thinking proportion here. Uh, rates on mortgages issued to men and women. So men, out of 500 mortgages, 65 were, resulted in foreclosure. Women, out of 200 mortgages, 18 resulted in foreclosure. So you're gonna have two sample proportions, right? Sample proportion for group one, sample proportion for group two. Um, and the null and alternate hypotheses are gonna look very similar, but not exactly the same this time. Because the null hypothesis, instead of being mu one equals mu two, will be P one equal, equals P two. P is the population proportion. And the alternate hypothesis is that P one is not equal to P two. Uh, what's the test statistic we're using? We must use Z. We don't even have a choice here. That's the only one we know how to use for, for proportion. 
<clears throat> what's alpha? 0.05, is it a two-tailed test? Yes, because in this class, all two sample tests are two-tailed tests. What are the critical values from the Z distribution uh, for 0.025 on one side and 0.025 on the other side? Yes, plus and minus. 1.96. Next semester, I dare you to try to forget two tail alpha 0.05 from the Z plus and minus 1.96. You're having trouble remembering it this semester. Next semester, you're going to have trouble forgetting it. Mark my words. Uh, you, you should get back to me and let me know if that happened. OK. Uh, so now, so we've got the first part, the null and null hypothesis. We've got the second part. We set up the decision rule, the critical values. Uh, we need the, the uh, calculated value of Z from the data. Whatever it calculates to, if it's greater than 1.96, it's in the region of rejection on this side. If it's less than 1.96, it's in the region of rejection on this side. And how do we do that? What formula do we use? Well, we're going to need the formula that has two proportions in it, right? Let's just take a quick look at the formula sheet. Oops. Uh, it's going to be a Z equals. I know it's here somewhere. There we are. The sample proportion one minus sample proportion two divided by P bar. So again, just like with T, we have this idea of a pooled uh, statistic and that's P bar where we take the two numerators and, and add them together and the two denominators and add them together. Take a minute or two, not more than that, and get the calculated value for Z for this problem. I'm gonna do that on your own for a minute. Just get the value. I see somebody is answering. Uh, no, it was a question. This is a two sample test for the difference between two proportions. You know it's a Z. Look on your formula sheet and look for something that starts Z equals and has two different proportions in it. It'll be this PS1 minus PS2 sample proportion one and sample proportion two. There's only one formula that looks like that. All right, so this is the 
solutions page, and it starts out with exactly what we had. The null hypothesis, P1 is equal to P2. The alternate hypothesis, P1 is not equal to P2. And it's a Z distribution with the critical values plus and minus 1.96. Here's the formula, Z equals PS1 is 65 over 500 or 0.13. There's that 0.13. PS2 is 18 over 200 or 0.09. There's the 0.09. That's the numerator. P bar is 65 plus 18, 83 in the numerator, and 500 plus 200 in the denominator, that's 700. So it's kind of like P bar is, we're, we're telling ourselves, what if this, this really was just uh, two samples from the same population? Well, why don't I just combine them and make believe that I got one bit, one sample of 700 uh, with 83, what was this, foreclosures? Yeah. So if they really are from the same population, my, my uh, overall pooled P should be 0 0.119, 83 over 700. Um, and that's what I put in for the measure of variation, 0.119 times one minus 0.119 times one over N1 plus one over N2, that's the formula. And you end up with uh, 1.48. Now, where is 1.48 um, on your uh, picture of your null hypothesis with the test statistic? It's not uh, beyond 1.96, it's not beyond negative 1.96, it's in the white area in the middle, the, the accept HO area in the middle. And of course, we don't say accept HO because you can never know for sure if they're exactly the same, but certainly you can't reject HO. And that's the way we put it. Okay, so you've just seen uh, one each of every type of two sample test. That that we learned that we learned how to do this semester. Totally, if you've uh, once you've learned the stuff that you had for exam three, this was nothing. This was very very easy because it was way reduced uh, from what you had to know for exam three. Um, if you had trouble with exam three, then you you know you may have more studying to do with two sample tests because. Uh, you have a lot of the same concepts here that we had before. We, we have a null and alternate hypothesis. We have the uh, critical values. We have a um, formula that we have to compute from the data, from the sample evidence. We've got um, to, to know whether to reject the null hypothesis or not. But there's a lot we don't have. And I went over that at the beginning of the class, things we don't have to know. Um, the rest of this, as they say, is just practice. And where are you going to find things to practice for two sample tests? Um, all of these practice problems, as long as um, they're about inference, they're going to have two sample tests in them. As a matter of fact, there was a review. Here it was. Uh, this first review session, review session for inference, um, you, you did this for the last test, but you skipped the material in here that was uh, related to two sample tests. So now you can go back and finish it and do the rest of it. Um, this is interesting. I have this right here. Maybe we should just jump to it. Well, let's do one more thing. Um, so in addition to uh, two sample tests, um, this next exam is going to cover correlation and regression. And you already know from preparing for class that correlation and regression, uh, here we are, um, is just basically a bunch of formulas. You, you already understand the concept of a p-value. So I'll show you where that might be relevant but I'm not gonna ask you 
to do an entire hypothesis test uh, in order to, to test the correlation coefficient for significance or in order to test um, the slope of the regression for significance. And those are things that really are done, sometimes even in an intro course, but um, it, it's not the way we do regression and correlation. The way we do regression and correlation is really mostly uh, like a descriptive technique. And if you remember way back when, when we did descriptives with two variables, we had a, a scatter plot. Well, if you take the scatter plot and you compute the correlation coefficient um, and or draw a straight line on it, that's correlation and regression. So let's just take a look at the steps here for computing these formulas. Now, somebody asked me um, if you're going to have to uh, get, if you're going to get raw data on a test. And yeah, sure, you should be able to do problems using raw data. But um, in my opinion, it's a very bad use of, of, class, of test time to have you adding up uh, long lists of numbers. Um, so I'll, you almost always give you the summations too, in addition to the data, or maybe in some problems, you'll only get the summations. But one thing you'll have to know, because I, I will very often not give it to you, you'll have to know whether which variable is X and which variable is Y. Remember, I'm always more interested in that you understand why things work, not how to plug numbers into a formula, okay? So you will need to know, if I give you two, two, two variables paired data, you'll need to know which one you should call X and which one you should call Y. When we do a problem, pay, you know, pay attention and, and keep it in mind. If you don't understand, then ask them. Um, okay, so the next step is to get the correlation coefficient. So you see correlation and regression, even though I'm treating them like two separate topics, they really are the same topic. Uh, and here we take some of the summations that we got from step one and we use it to compute a correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient tells us um, how strongly related these two variables are. And it goes from negative one to positive one and an R of zero means no relationship. Um, we're not going to test this for significance, but it definitely can be. And also we can sometimes give a good guess. You know, if you have a correlation coefficient of 0 0.01 or negative 0 0.01, it's a pretty good guess that that's not too different from zero. Uh, now the step three, you calculate the coefficient of determination, R square, it's just R square. Um, but it's a very important measure because not only does it give you a measure of correlation that's, uh, uh, sign that's not related to sign, you know, you're getting rid of the effects of the sign by squaring, but it actually is more meaningful uh, th for the regression. Um, R square, which is called the coefficient of determination, uh, gives you the proportion of the variation in Y that's explained by X, if you have only a one, one X in, in your regression. Um, we always, the, the Y, the response variable, is always what we're studying. The X is what we're using to try to understand it. So, for example, if Y is exam grades, exam scores, for X, we might be choosing things like um, how much money you have in the bank or how many hours you spent studying or how long your big toe is. Uh, we're trying to find things that might explain why everyone doesn't get the same value on their exam, why everyone doesn't get the same score. So R square is the proportion of variation that's explained by the regression, the pr proportion of the total variation in Y. Um, then we get the regression coefficient B1. You compute that too. Now, yeah, these are big formulas, but you have the formula sheet. I don't want you to, to memorize anything. Uh, you have the formula sheet. It's just a matter of figuring out which are the summations. The, the only thing you'll be thinking about really is what's X and what's Y, because like I said, I'll be giving you the summations. Um, and 
you have to compute B1 using this formula. Then you compute B0 um, using B1. And then you can finally write out the regression equation. If this is the scatter plot, the regression equation is a line that's uh, drawn through the scatter plot in the best possible way. Okay. And if your scatter plot looks like this, the line that was drawn doesn't look that bad. Y hat is always your regression line. And um, B0 is the uh, y intercept. B1 is your slope. If B1 is positive, that means you have a positive slope. As x goes up, y goes up. If B1 is negative, that means you have a negative slope. As x goes up, y goes down. Um, what can the intercept tell us? Well, it could tell us what's the value of y when x is 0. If there's, if there's no x, if there's nothing. Um, I don't have a big toe. My big toe is absent. X is 0. What will my grade be uh, if, we, if we were to use that ridiculous example? OK. And this is just we're going to see other examples, but this is just one. Uh, let's see. What would be a good one to look at? You know, I kind of like the pretty one uh, here. This review is on the handouts page under review session. Uh, regression problems using Excel. OK, you already can follow this sheet in order to uh, get the formulas down for correlation and regression if you don't have Excel. Um, and it's just a matter of plugging numbers into formulas. So it's kind of um, it, it's boring to go over it. Uh, now, although I don't mind doing it, but let's first go over things where we can actually interpret the results first. Okay. Um, here's a, a problem. There's a reason that this is in here, even though we're kind of saying, I want to show you something that where we should not have done a regression. That's basically what this problem is. Um, the x is a math score, uh, on, probably on a math test, or, uh, and y is a job performance score. And we want to see uh, what the relationship is. We want to see uh, whether uh, the score that an individual gets on the math test uh, has anything to do with predict predicting their job performance in this particular job. Take a look at the scatter plot. The scatter plot looks pretty random, right? This is a really bad candidate for regression. All right. And that's why um, we're using this first, because significance f is p value. And you know that p value is the probability of getting the sample evidence that I got given that uh, x and y are not related, OK? And, and basically, what this is asking is, is this a significant regression? Does the regre is, the re is the regression something that I can um, write up? Can I say, oh, this regression was a good idea, and everyone should do it? This is a formula that should be used in the future for predicting. Well, just looking at the scatter plot, you know that's probably not so. Uh, but the, the, the significance of the regression, <coughs> we didn't learn the f-test, but that's what significance f is. It's the significance, the p-value of the f-test. It's If we're using 0.05 um, for alpha, uh, you know, usually, it's certainly greater than 0.05. Even if we were going to use 0.10, it's certainly greater than 0.10. What about? Um, if we were going to look at some of the others, like the slope term, which is related to R, OK? The p-value for that is also, actually, it's exactly the same, because they are related. 
the slope and the regression, um, when we're testing the slope and we're testing the regression in a, a, a simple regression with one X, um, that's, we're, we're basically looking at the same dimension. So if you have a, prob a problem like this, you don't immediately go and start answering or asking or answering questions about the correlation and about the regression. There's no point. It shouldn't have been done. Um, but let's take a look at a problem where it's okay, it works. Here we've got uh, X, years of education, Y, hourly rate wage. And remember when you're deciding on X and Y, so when, when the problem is asking you to decide on X and Y, um, Y in some way depends on X, not the other way around. X is the independent, Y is the dependent. We're using X to explain Y, all right? So in this case, um, I don't think, we don't have the uh, scatter plot here, but all right. Um, in this case, we're saying, yes, there is a significant relationship. We're not doing a test, but at least it, it's meaningful to go ahead and look at the regression. Uh, let's, let's look at these questions. I like this because these are some questions that can be asked in a Blackboard type of test. Okay, is the regression significant? Yes or no? I probably, probably not gonna ask true and falses, but all right, you, you should be able to figure it out. If, if I do ask that question, it's something you should be able to figure out. Um, what's the value of B0? Well, you read it right off the table. I mean, if, if this is a problem where I ask you to uh, compute the values on your own, uh, here we are. Well, then you, do, you computed it. So you should be able to answer the question, what is B0, what is B1? You should be able to write that in for sure. But on the um, regression output, you should be able to do it too. The coefficient, the intercept is B0, that's negative 17.9. Uh, basically what that means is that uh, supposedly, if I have zero years of education, then uh, my hourly wage should be a negative value. Now, this, the intercept, as we know, doesn't always make sense. Uh, all it is is a way of positioning things on the two-dimensional plane. Um, so it doesn't always really mean when you have zero X, here's what Y is gonna be. Um, B1 is the coefficient for what's called on Excel X variable one. And that, that's the slope, it's the slope term. There's a positive slope, 3.349, okay? So that's B0, B1. Question three, what's the regression equation? Oh, I know how to do that. The regression equation is, let's see, let's just write it out. I just look at the uh, output and I say the regression equation is y hat, hmm equals, and what's B0? Negative 17.94 plus 3.349 times X. That's the regression equation. So if, if that's my question, I know how to answer it. Um, what's the correlation coefficient? Oops. Okay, what's the correlation coefficient? Well, that's what Excel calls multiple R. Okay, so R is the correlation, R is 0.868. It's a fairly strong positive correlation we got here. We're not testing it, but it's a pretty high number. It's almost 0 0.9, which, which would be significant. Um, what's the next question? It doesn't, it doesn't ask about R square, but if somebody, if, it, if a question is asked, you can pull R square right off here, 0. 0.754. If, if the question asks, what's the proportion of the variation in wages that's explained by years of education, 0. 0.754, that's the definition of R square. What does it ask? What's the proportion? Oh, that is it. Oh, okay. What's the proportion of variation hourly wage explained by year? That's just, that's the, the definition of, of R square. So I just read R square 
off of the uh, output. I think there's another question, but we didn't ask it in the first problem. Let's ask it here. Okay, here's another one. Uh, we have X is age, Y is how long it takes to complete a task. All right. Um, if, I, if I look at R first, there's a positive correlation, fairly strong positive correlation, although I won't ask you uh, to test it for significance. Actually, we can see right here um, that the regression is significant. Uh, the the B, B0 and B1, B0, you pull off of the output, 11.525. B1, 1.032. Uh, the, the regression equation is B0 plus B1 times X. What's the correlation coefficient? We just saw that. Uh, what's R squared? 0.753. And now there's another the additional question here. How long would it take somebody who was of age 50 to complete the task? Well, for, there's, a, there's an answer to that. All we do is we take uh, 50 and plug it into X in the regression equation. So we would have 1.032 times 50 added to 11.525. But I want you to notice something. Um, are these ages in order? Yeah, so the ages go from 23 to 70, which is good because regression is not really um, valid if you're extrapolating. If you're interpolating, if you have a value that's in the data that you already use to build the regression, um, that's okay. But if, if, for example, you wanted to know how long would it take somebody who was of age 16 to do the task, this regression wouldn't really help you. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be valid. Um, somebody asked the question, how do we know if the regression is significant? And that's just this thing called significance. Right over here in the middle, smack in the middle. Okay. And so the answer to this question, how long would it take somebody who was age 50 to complete the task? is 63.125 minutes. All we're doing here is plugging a value into the regression formula. Um, so what you see here is, is taking a bird's eye view of correlation and regression. Um, you see that you can compute the correlation coefficient, you can compute R square, you can compute the regression coefficients. You can do that all without Excel using the formulas, and you should know how to do that. But you could also answer all these questions with the Excel printout um, and, very, and, and maybe half and half uh, on the test. Uh, half I might ask you to do the computation, half I might ask you to just read off a, a, a printout and either answer a multiple choice question or write in the answer. You should be able to handle it either way. Uh, okay. Now let's take a look at one more. In this problem, uh, we've got, uh, okay, a little bit of shameless uh, self-promotion. Uh, X is the number of absences in class, which I just gave up on, so I wouldn't even know. Um, y is the score that you get on the statistics final. Um, and uh, clearly, we're looking to see if the differences in score can be explained at least partially by the number of absences that a student has. Um, is the regression significant? How do we know? You look at that middle where it says significance and it's 0 0.003, so it's quite small, this p-value, uh, and it's certainly less than 0.05 or 0.01. So the answer is yes, it's significant. What is B0, what is B1? B0, um, 86, where are we? I need this a little larger. Uh, 
All right. Oh, we have it right here. 88. Okay. Uh, 88.75 is B0. Negative 4.4 is B1. So what does a negative slope mean? Anybody? Just explain it in words. Either, either verbally, and if you unmute yourself, or in the chat. What does that negative 4.40 mean? In terms of the relationship between absences and the score on the final. I got a chat. Okay. Somebody didn't want to wait. <laughs> okay. Um, it, first of all, mainly what it tells me is that I have a negative slope. There's a negative relationship or an inverse relationship between number of absences and the score on the stat final. So as the number of absences goes up, as it gets larger and larger and larger, the score on the stat final goes down. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, remember I said shameless self-promotion, okay? Um, so that's, a, that's a, a negative and inverse relationship. Now, well, here's a good time to point out R. Um, is that one of the questions? What's the correlation coefficient? Take a look at this, skip ahead. What's the correlation coefficient? Well, if it's an inverse relationship, the correlation coefficient is supposed to be negative, right? Negative point zero, uh, point 0.674. What do you have over here? You just have plus point 0.674. Um, Excel doesn't give you the minus because Excel computes R square and then just takes the square root in order to get R. You have to figure out if this R is supposed to have a minus sign on it. How do you know that? You know that from looking at the slope. If the slope is negative, there's an inverse relationship, and then R has to be negative. And you have to know that from, from working with the Excel output. Okay, how do we express the regression equation? Y hat is equal to 88.75 minus. 4.4 times x. If, um, if I know someone who's absent eight times, what would I predict that that person would get on the, the, the final? Well, I have to plug eight into my equation. So y hat would be 88.75 minus 4.40 times eight or 53.55. Um, how good is number of absences as a measure of explaining the grade that a student gets on the stat final? Eh, it's okay, but it could be better. The proportion of variation in Y that's explained by X is 0.454, okay? 45% of the variation in Y can be explained by X. The rest of it, is due to other factors that we didn't consider in this problem. All right, I'll leave the rest for you. Now, let's go to you now, because um, I wanted to at least uh, illustrate in order to, to explain, uh, to help your understanding, every different type of problem you'd get uh, and explain what you're required to do to study for the test. But um, now let me throw this over to you. What questions do you have? Or do you have a particular problem that you were doing that gave you trouble? Um, as a matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll stop the record, if I can figure out where that is, um, to make sure that people aren't shy about bringing up their questions. I'll just pause. <laughs> 